Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Muziam Mukhtar. Hello, everybody. How are you feeling? How is the day so far? Awesome. I'm excited, and we are actually really excited that all of you are here. I'm a researcher. I spend a lot of my time being in the field, uh, observing people, observe, seeing what, how they utilize our apps and how they uh, make use of these Android apps that we are building. I'm today also representing two of my uh, colleagues, Tracy and Garen, who most recently worked on uh, YouTube Go, which is uh, a separate YouTube app build specifically for new internet users in countries like India. And if you are looking out to build apps for, that really work very well for such users, people who are coming online for the first time, this talk is going to be really, uh, really uh, helpful to you. And um, we are glad that you are here. Well, the reality of today's internet is that most of its growth is happening here in India, year over year. Two billion new internet users have come online in just past 15 years, mainly from countries like India. And for almost all of them, their exposure to technology has been purely on uh, mobile phones, not desktops. And most don't even have access to desktops. These phones are cheaper, slower, and aren't always up to date. The internet is relatively a new concept to them. It's expensive, it's slow, and it's intermittent. And rarely they ever get a chance to use Wi-Fi. So while universally we are all human beings, we might have had different experiences in life, we might have lived in different cultures, different contexts, but what we believe at Google is that we can do a far better job at designing experiences that addresses different constraints, different technical know-hows, and different mental models. Over the past few years, Google has spent a lot in understanding how to approach these challenges. And we are excited to share our framework that we use within the company to think about this. This framework helps us to make really usable and useful products, engaging products. We will walk through two important factors today and will provide you really clear, simple, focused tips that you can straight away apply on your products. Let's start. We'll start with a usable bucket, and which focuses on a very simple but most important question. Can your product be used? The three important concept, uh, components, concepts in that are cost, connectivity, and compatibility. First cost. Here is a comparison. For one gigabyte of data that uh, You've, that users use in US, you would have to work a little over 20 minutes. To afford the same in India, people work around 12 hours to afford the same. And typically, it's going to be a flaky connection. This is changing from past few months, but typically for these users, data is much harder to come by. And for that reason, people really value each MB that they spend. Of course, we know in India that prepaid, people are using prepaid data. Prepaid is where people do not have to really commit to an ongoing uh, uh, plan. People are buying denominations based on what they can afford and what they foresee as actually needing. Therefore, they almost like budget it out uh, as, they, as they find uh, it's necessary. Data is money for these people. Well, how, uh, what about Wi-Fi? So we know Wi-Fi is really uh, connected, is rarely connected to, because it's not accessible, it's not available. Globally, there is one Wi-Fi hotspot for every 150 people. And in India, it's a lot higher. That means one hotspot per 3,900 people. So in order to meet the global average, we will have to install 8 million more hotspots throughout the country. The point here is that public Wi-Fi is rare, making data that much more precious, that much more um, expensive. You might now be thinking about Wi-Fi at home. Do you know how many people really uh, have a broadband internet at, uh, at homes? 
Yeah, it's really, really less. It's 1.6% of the entire population is subscribed to fixed line broadband internet. Therefore, these people, uh, if they're actually accessing internet at home, they are using mobile data. In short, internet is expensive and internet is rarely available. So here is our first tip for cost. For data heavy tasks, provide transparency and control over data consumption. The example on the right is from Google uh, YouTube Go app. For, in order to, after selecting the video, users are given the control to select their quality, what quality of the video they want to watch. So they see upfront, know upfront, how much they are gonna be spending before they actually commit on an action. And we say specifically for data heavy tasks because this transparency definitely is not that important for smaller amounts, negligible amounts like 10 KB or so. The second topic in the usable bucket is about connectivity. Of course, we know that these people who are coming online for the first time often have really slower speeds. They use cheaper 2G, uh, cheaper 3G connections. They are, what is also important to know that according to one of the studies, we figured out that the range of 3G network calls succeed only 68 to uh, 65 to 80% of the times. Crucial that most of us uh, who are trying to build these apps, we have to acknowledge and embrace intermittency. That means flakiness. Designers, as uh, we develop uh, and work with developers and design uh, various uh, states, we are familiar with that. Uh, we understand online, which is a very ideal state. We also design for partially loaded states and error states. A typical design uh, thinks like it is thought through as we are moving from one online uh, state to another online state to another on online state. Uh, often, we also uh, design for error. Uh, very hardly, we consider uh, slow, flaky connections. So when thinking about designing for slow, uh, flaky connections, we have added few more states to make it more comprehensive. So while historically, it is, uh, we know that only online is idle, now offline is idle too. In addition to loading, showing loading in progress, we want to differentiate between loading started and then the progress, then it is progressing. On top of this, we also have to take account of no online content. As we know that most, assuming the app will be used in on, offline, con, um, offline usage, we have to take account of times when we really don't have any content to show. So instead, we might actually look like this. We have no offline content, we start with that. Loading starts, content is partially loaded, and then we have a fully rich online state. And we definitely consider offline as premium as online. So accounting for each step, we are resilient for these on, uh, slow and flaky connections. We have thought through at each step. Here's an example. Uh, this is our first tip uh, for connectivity. Expect latency by designing offline, design for the loading retries, success experiences. Make great connectivity as your edge case. That means designing for the slow internet speed is your primary use case. Example from Chrome has added a feature that downloads a page uh, late. It allows you to download the page later, allowing that state to be uh, far richer. Another example is from search itself. Without, if you search without uh, internet, intentionally or unintentionally, uh, search will tell you, it will give you a notification when the result is ready. Here, uh, also, the second tip for connectivity is allow offline usage. That means that offline mode people uh, can use in offline modes. It helps keep the information available when the data is off. We, of course, know how Google Maps helps navigate the users when they are not connected to internet. The final component to usability uh, is compatibility. 
often very technical about OSs and uh, hardware, which is, of course, really, really relevant. Here, we will only focus on the design implications and how we have to consider um, compatibility of devices. Half of in, uh, smartphones in India are uh, really low end, below $100, and sometimes um, even cheaper. As you can imagine, the, uh, they are, um, the hardware is not as uh, uh, premium, uh, they're not as great as the premium devices that many of us here use. Screen resolutions are bad, um, also contrast is really bad, touch feedback is worse. We're using slower processes, so working with the developers to figure out how best can we design for that. On top of that, many of these people's first phones are secondhand. That means they're using, phones are expensive for them, and they're using someone else's phones or also broken phones. All of these contribute to an to a ecosystem that we have to take care of and pay attention to every time that we are designing uh, for uh, such devices. Here's a tip for compatibility. So basically, support screen rotation. That means allow users to use your app in both the orientations. That way, you will have different button placements and user can use your app even on broken phones. Material design, of course, gives you a lot of affordances, a lot of different various button options. Uh, choose the one that are most relevant uh, for these type of devices and these type of uh, mental models, people's mental models. What we have also learned from field, like with uh, being with users, we have understood that buttons with the uh, border, uh, border or little drop shadows, they seem to work far better than plain text. Here's our first tip for compatibility. Design larger, clearer, farther apart affordances. So example here is from YouTube Go app. The buttons are big, high contrast. Also what we have understood is pairing of icon and the text helps people to understand what the affordance is all about, they can remember it. Think of each of these items to work as compensating with each other, uh, in a way that if there is any, uh, you know, any things get anything get lost in translation, they can support each other. So now we will move to the next bucket that is useful. Useful means is your app, is your product valuable? Is it uh, is it really meeting the needs of the user? Is it of a good use? In this, we cover three main topics, culture, content, and commerce. Culture. Culture is the way we do things here. It manifests in different variety of ways, but for today, for the time purposes, we are going to concentrate on one aspect, that's information density. These images are very, very common sight in India, very dense signages. The point here is that what is clutter and not simple, clean design could be actually preference to others. And, the point, and uh, while we see these differences, they can be really overwhelming. Uh, but let's embrace these differences. Here's our first tip. Show breadth of everything that is on your product. Uh, do not assume a mental model and end up skipping details. Uh, here is an example from Google search. Uh, it actually helps you discover various categories, gives you facts like current weather, maybe news, uh, before actually worrying about uh, writing. For these, some, some of these new internet users, uh, writing is added efforts, and uh, it can be really hard also to do it on small mobile devices. Another example is a UC browser. It has a, a, a lot of, lot of um, bookmarks and app launchers front and center. The line between density and clutter is a very tricky one. Balance the meaningfulness and hierarchy uh, with the local aesthetics. That's the, our next tip. Don't westernize everything. Make sure that you are using local aesthetics. This way, you, your product will be more relatable, more uh, 
it may appear it may also make people realize that you care and pay attention to cultural aesthetics a great example is google allo stickers not uh, these stickers are downloadable packages that uh, you can use while you're chatting uh, not only can you see that there is a lot of local um, uh, local aesthetics in it or, but also common uh, phrases that they are using okay let's move on the content is our next important bucket in the use of, uh, in the useful uh, part one way content manifests is language so the stats on the english language are really sometimes unreliable we say that we have 30% of population in in india that can speak and uh, also speak english while as 10 per, uh, while as one third of it is what uh, what actually uh, people can read and write so it's about 10% overall interesting stat to consider besides this is that a lot of people a uh, lot of these new internet users are using android os in english despite it not being their first language despite them not being able to read and write so well so what we need to do is we need to make our english ui also really simple first step for that use short simple and uh, a very direct uh, English so that you have maximum clarity with that we also want to say that there is an example that we have given uh, where you uh, uh, it's an example which we should not be doing past YouTube onboard flow there is a word awesomeness basically awesomeness does not mean awesome or great for many of the vernaculars uh, in India Second tip would be to speak the language. Offer regional languages. English does not work at many places. Make language switching easy. Uh, example from uh, search itself, uh, you have English and Hindi side by side. Uh, other thing that we have learned also is uh, among these new internet users, they, uh, they rely a lot on sharing, sharing of information. And, uh, what here you see is on the YouTube Go, we have clear shared affordance centered and underneath the video uh, with the title. It's easy to discover. And once you realize you want to share your content, you, um, you can click on this and share the content with the user. Uh, one another thing that you could do is here is another manifestation of the same, uh, how you can encourage sharing, a sharing of experiences is by peer to peer sharing feature. On YouTube Go, we have uh, a way to uh, allow people to share videos. It's a social currency, basically, to any friend with a really minimum uh, use of data. Final component in useful is commerce. Economies and the mental models around money are really, really different. Uh, and there are different forms of payment that we all, all also know. For design, we need to understand one very important aspect, and let's dis uh, there's, that's a discussion that I would have uh, wanted to have with some of you, is about the sachet model of consumption. People often buy small packages, say in shampoos and uh, detergents, so low, they, they are low cost, they're uh, easily accessible, uh, and basically it's about trying an experience, a little by little. That's essential, especially when people don't know what the product does or what the product is useful for them. Is it useful or not? So what do you, uh, what do, what's the tip for that? Here is our tip. Allow people to try and see before they buy. Provide the taste of the experience. Uh, and here, uh, the example here is Flipkart. Flipkart ha heavily invests in apps as well as in its uh, web app. People can see what Flipkart is like after downloading, uh, before the, the downloading the app, basically what they do is um, people, uh, these users can go online and see, feel the experience before they actually commit on using the mobile data, battery, and storage space on their phones. Another very good example is uh, YouTube Go, when people can click on the video, they see a preview, they get an understanding of what the video is about before they, committing on the, they commit on the mobile uh, data to download. Uh, remember that my, uh, data is really like money. Uh, another tip for commerce is 
support alternate billing. Less than 2% of India's population uses in, uh, credit cards. It's really important to figure out ways that we can support local forms of payment. Here is an example from the World Cricket Championship app, which is a really famous uh, popular gaming app in India. It allows you to pay from your cellular deposit. So like in India itself, we have so many people coming online every year. Let's not forget, while we are humans, our context, cultures, and constraints are different, we have to design for all of those different experiences. Thank you so much for following along with me uh, when we saw how, how we can make products more usable and useful by these simple tips. One last piece of advice, if I had to give you other than to follow this framework, would be to listen to your users. Meet them in personal conversations, spend time with them, see, be in their, uh, observe how they use things. Also, get feedback on your product and ask the question why, and therefore make sense out of that and apply it to your products. There's, uh, this framework was, uh, is little bigger than what I sh uh, showed you today. There are a lot more tips. Uh, I would encourage you to go to, uh, it's published at the ACM Interactions. There's a link there. Also, you can go to the link developers.google.com slash billions. We, be, we constantly keep it updated. And I'm also available at the consultation zone. Um, I am happy to answer any questions, any discussions that you would like to have. Thank you.